video is to help you understand how to work with ChemPink. And specifically, we're going to be doing the particulate nature questions, and that will also get you a much better understanding of what we're doing in this chapter. So here we go. You'll always come to this screen first when you start an assignment, and it explains to you you have to get 10 questions correct before you miss three. And if you don't, if you miss three, it will kick you out and make you start over again. So the goal, of course, is to get through. Now, on this screen, and if you want, you can stop the video and copy down the screen. Uh, you might even want to take a picture of it with your phone. But let's, let's go through and see what we're supposed to do. Click on the image that most accurately represents a pure element. Now, this is the operant word right here, most. So, if we're looking at most, that means there's only one possible answer. On several of these questions, there will be several answers. So, uh, you have to be able to decide when there's going to be more and when there's not going to be more than one. So, we look at this first thing right here. When I look at that, I see two molecules and these molecules are each one gray and four whites. What that represents, the atoms that those represent, is far less important than the ratio of the whites to the gray. So this is a one to four ratio, gray to white, and uh, you can see that both of them are the same. So this, these two molecules are the smallest part of a compound. So that rules this guy out. Can't, can't choose this guy. Now, if we look at this guy here on this screen, I see a gray and two reds, and then I see two reds all by themselves. This is a compound, a molecule, that has a definite ratio of uh, grays to reds. And this is a pure element because we have, although it's a, there's a molecule here, just because it's a molecule does not make it a compound. If there's only one kind of atom, it is an, a pure element. And this is a pure compound. So we want something that's just a pure element, so we rule this guy out. Now, would you think to yourself, before, uh, and actually stop when I tell you to, to figure out what we have in this screen, okay? and Figure it out by elements, compounds, and mixtures. Oh, stop now. Figure it out. Okay, you're back. Now let's go through it together. We have one blue, two reds here. We have one blue, two reds here. So both of these guys are the same uh, compound, or represent the same compound, and in the compound only has two molecules in the box. Now here's one red and two whites. So that's a different compound. So this is a mixture of two compounds. Definitely not a pure element. Now let's look at this guy next. See where I am? Say so we have a red and two whites. That's a compound. And when we have all grays, we have an element, and that element is all one kind of stuff, okay, and that, that's the grays. And this also happens to be a solid because of the way it's arranged. Okay. Now, this is our correct answer here, and the correct answer is that we have one molecule of a pure element, a second molecule of a pure element, a third molecule of a pure element, and so this most accurately represents a pure element. Moving on. Now here, they want you to give them each, and let's get this guy, I'm going to stop for a minute. Okay, let's take a look and see what we've got going here. Right here, we have carbon and oxygen. That's a compound. Here, we don't have a compound, we have an element. Now, you should take a look at a periodic chart and notice that all, almost all of the elements are made up of two letters. And now, think for just a second. 
And what do you notice about the second letter in every element that has two letters in its symbol? That's right. It's a lowercase. So this guy represents Fe, which is the symbol for iron, but this is fluorine. Okay, without a second little letter. So let's go back now and say, oh, we're supposed to have a mixture. A formula that represents each one of these that represents a mixture. So check the box next to each formula that represents a mixture. So this guy is definitely not a mixture. It's a compound or a molecule of a compound. This is an atom of an element. This guy is a molecule and a, a, a single atom. And together, they represent a mixture of the compound that we call water and the element that we call magnesium. So I would click this guy. I know that that one's good. Now, this N2. This would represent an element because there's two atoms of the same kind. This would represent the water, H2O, is the smallest part of the, the molecule. The molecule, it is a molecule of a compound. So we only have one correct answer here. Okay, so we can go ahead and submit this. Now, again, we've got this each thing. It represents a mixture. Check the box next to each image that represents a mixture. Well, gosh, I'm looking at this thing, and I'm going to rule stuff out first. With a mixture, we have two pure substances, which in this case, you see this first box here. In this box, we just have two molecules of the same compound. So that's not a mixture. Here, we have two atoms of the same element. Now here we have two atoms of blue that are together in a molecule, two atoms of blue that are together in a molecule, and two atoms of red that are together in a molecule. So we have two different kinds of elements, which means that we have a mixture. And so we can click that and here we have red, white, white, red, white, white. That's two molecules of the same compound. And here we have elements, the grays, okay? That, those are single atoms of one kind of an element. And so we have an element and a compound mixture, where back on this one, we had a mixture of two elements. Here we have a mixture of an element and a compound. Now they didn't state that they had to be elements or compounds, so it, it was just a mixture. All right, so those are the only two that fit, and we go on. Now here they're wanting us to get each image, so there's multiple answers possible. Check out the box next to each image that represents a substance that is made of molecules. Okay, this substance is pure, and it's made of a molecule that has one gray and four whites. So we can click this guy. What is this? Think in your mind. Element or compound? Okay, yeah, this is an element. So... It's just a, a substance that's not made of molecules, and it's, it's just a pure element. How about this guy? A substance that is made of molecules. This could go both ways. I would interpret this as these, these two guys are two of the same atom, and so they are a molecule, okay? So they didn't say it had to be a compound, so I'm going to check this one. So it's substance that's made of molecules. So this is definitely molecules. It's just not a compound. It's a pure element. Now here we have only one kind of element again. Uh, looks like we have the same guy that we have up here, only this was in the gas phase, 
and this is in the solid phase. But neither one is made of molecules. These are just uh, in the solid state, so it's not a, actually a molecule. Let's see if I, my thinking on this one is right or wrong. And I was right on that. They're, they're thinking the same way I am, and that's good. I'm glad of that. <laughs> okay, next one here. Each. Okay, so we could have more than one answer, right? So each image that represents a sample that is a mixture of two compounds. Okay, we have a gray with four whites, a gray with four whites, and a blue with three whites. Okay, that represents two different compounds. Okay, one is the gray with four whites, the other one is the blue with three whites. So that is a mixture of two compounds. We can have a mixture of two elements too. We have that right down here. See here? What are the elements? The blues and the reds. So that's a mixture. And, oh, guess what? It's not compounds. Okay, it's supposed to be compounds. That is a mixture, but it's not compounds. See, likewise, this guy up here is a mixture, but it's a com uh, actually two elements. The blue-blue uh, is two molecules to, uh, or two atoms to a molecule, of the blue stuff, whatever that is, and this is a single atom, so this is an element and this is an element. So there's no two compounds here. And here you might get suckered. You might think, oh yeah, there's two different kinds of stuff here. That's true. But this guy is a molecule, which represents a compound, and this is, this guy right here is where I'm looking, this guy right here is a, just a single gray, which means that's an element. So this is a mixture, but it's an element and a compound, where the question was two compounds. So there you go on that one. Now let's see what we have to learn here. Check the box next to each image. Okay, when you see the each, you know that that guy is going to be a, an issue of... Um, Maybe two, maybe three, maybe only one. But it says each image that represents a substance that is both gas and element. Okay? So, is this a gas? Yes, because the molecules are far apart. Is there more than one kind of gas here? Okay, I'm looking at all of them that I can look at in this box, and all I see is two blues together. So is this a substance that's both a gas and an element? Absolutely. It's a gas because the, the molecules are far apart, and it's a, an element because there's only one kind of atom. Now we look up here. This is a gas. Oh, yeah, that's a gas. But is it a, a, an element? No. It's a blue with three, red, three whites. I'm sorry. A blue with three whites, and that's all that's there. So that's definitely not an element, which is what it's asking up in here. It's both a gas and an element. Now here we see just the grays, and it's a gas and an element, isn't it? It's a gas because it's far apart. It's an element because there's only one kind of atom dripping around there in the gas state. All right, we go on. And now, this, this is going to throw a lot of you for a loop. Let's get this back over here. Given the key at the left, check the, bo the box. There we go. That's the operant word. Only one of these can be correct. The best describes. Ah, that best word. Best describes, that tells you that there's only going to be one answer. So don't go answering twice. So we have over here the key. That's what they're talking about here on the left side. And here we have the representations. Now, we've got to be sure that you understand how to read this stuff, so I'm going to do that for you. This is carbon as a solid. That's what the S means. And that's an element, because there's only one kind of atom. This is a molecule, which represents a compound. And this guy has got two nitrogens. See that? Two. 
tells you how many of the nitrogens you have. You always go from the number up and to the left to get what the number is telling you. It's telling you there's two nitrogens and there's only one oxygen. And this molecule is in the gas phase. Now we have carbon, the solid, which is an element, and nitrogen with two oxygens. See that two goes to the guy up to the left, and that's in the gas phase. Then we have carbon again as a solid, and we have oxygen as a gas. On the last one, we have carbon as a gas, and one nitrogen with two oxygens as a solid. Now, let's look over here and see what we're supposed to get. Describes the contents of the sample below. Okay, the, the nitrogen here is the blue guy with two reds that are oxygens. Well, that's water, H2O. So, guess what I can do? I can go right through here and say, because there's no water in here, I can get rid of this guy. There's no water in the second one, so I can get rid of that. And there's no water in the third one. Or no, Oh, it's not water, it's nitrogen, nitrogen dioxide. Oops, I was thinking water. I should not have been thinking water. I should have been thinking of one nitrogen and two oxygens. Okay, this guy is two nitrogens and one oxygen, so yes, we can rule that out. This, this one here is one nitrogen and two oxygens, and that guy is a possibility, so I'm not going to cross him out. In this third one down, 13 carbons and four oxygens, there is no nitrogen dioxide, so I'm going to rule that guy out. But this guy has nitrogen dioxide, too. Now, I've just shown you a strategy for answering these kinds of questions. Okay, we can rule out stuff and limit our possibilities, which gives us a greater possibility for accuracy. Now, it says describe the contents best. The carbon, see this carbon here in this guy and this guy, the only difference is one's in the solid phase and one's in the gas phase. So... My question to you is, what does this represent? Carbon as a gas or carbon as a solid? So I, I hope that you're thinking this way. Yeah? So guess what? This, this answer right here, the carbon is as a gas, so I can take it out of there. And by simple elimination, and we, we always want to double check, we have right here carbon as a solid. And right here we have nitrogen dioxide, and do we have two of them? We do not. Oh, guess what? I ruled one out. That is the correct answer. This guy here. Oh, oh. but this has nitrogen di two nitrogens. All right. So this is not a perfect representation. It it is correctly identifying all the molecules, but there's something wrong. It should have had a coefficient here of 2, but this is the one that best describes what's in the box. So let's go back and uh, continue. I'm going to go ahead and submit my answer. And, oh, I didn't answer at all. Oh, silly me. So here we've got the correct, whoops, this, this would be our correct answer right here because we have one nitrogen and two oxygens. Not the best answer, but it is the correct answer. So now that you know, we can continue. And we're going to continue on a second video. So that will be it for this video.